Thank you. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and get started with our meeting. Um, thank you for coming and thank you for attending the Planning Commission's uh, normal monthly meeting. Uh, the meeting is being held at 8 a.m. Wednesday, January 20th, 2016. Uh, the meeting is being broadcast live on the town's informational channel and will run several times throughout the week. I'm Keith Frost, the Planning Commission Chair, and I will ask the other members to please introduce themselves. Good morning, I'm Frank Berry. Good morning, Sammy Hendricks. Good morning, I'm Brian Amick. Good morning, Roscoe Kaufman. Good morning, I'm Lisa Gibson. Good morning, I'm Jeannie Michaels. Good morning, I'm Jamie Fight. Good morning, I'm John Bartlett. Good morning, I'm Brett Poole, Town Administrator. Good morning, I'm Kathy Manis, Town Council. Good morning, I'm Brad Cunningham, Town Attorney. Good morning, I'm Ron Williams, Town Council. Good morning, Todd Carnes, Town Council. Rosemary Newsom, Planning, Building, and Technology. Good morning, Charlie Thomas, Building Commission. Good morning, Randy Edwards, Town and Transportation Director. Thank you very much. At this point, I'll ask Commissioner Gibson if she will lead us an invocation. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to serve, to serve our town. I pray that you would give us wisdom and guidance. I pray that you would be with those that serve and protect our town and our country, our nation, and their families and protect them. Lord, I pray that you would protect those from the cold that don't have adequate services at this point, and may we be mindful of others' needs. May we always strive to serve you in everything that we do for you. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you very much. At this time, I will call the meeting to order. Um, we don't have any deletions to our agenda uh, that I'm aware of. So the first item is uh, approval of our meeting minutes from November 18, 2015. You've received those in your packets. Do we have any additions, corrections? So moved. All right. Here you get a motion and a second. Any, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, first item of new business is site plan approval for a commercial center located at 5326 Sunset <coughs> Boulevard. John? Good morning. Welcome back. I hope everybody enjoyed their December off and had a good holiday. Um, the first item is uh, Columbia Development Company has submitted a site plan for a commercial <coughs> center to be located at 5326 Sunset Boulevard. The development encompasses approximately 18 acres of a 24-acre site. It will have 143,000 143, square feet of commercial space. Access from Sunset Boulevard will occur through a signalized driveway that aligns with Palmetto Park Boulevard. A secondary, secondary driveway that accesses Saluda Springs Drive is also included in the plan. The developer submitted a traffic impact study that has been reviewed and approved by the town's transportation director. The primary driveway will require installation of an additional leg on the traffic signal on Sunset Boulevard. It will also include a new deceleration lane for westbound traffic and new striping for eastbound turns into the site. The plan appears to meet all zoning requirements, uh, except there's no connectivity shown or future connectivity shown on the eastern side of the property. All right. Can answer any questions or uh, representatives from the <coughs> Devel Columbia Development Company are here. All right. Do we have any questions for John? All right. Um, I did receive several uh, emails with re regarding this project. All of them have given been given to you all and to the uh, clerk for inclusion in the record. So. All right. And we have someone from the developer here to speak. I believe they have a PowerPoint uh, presentation that will be shown on the on the TV screens okay. among other information that they'll provide. All right.
Good morning. Um, my name is Jenkins Williamson. I'm with Columbia Development. Um, we are retail developers. Um, our offices are located uh, here in Columbia. We're on Forest Drive, uh, 18 or 1824. Um, actually, St. Julian Place, right off of Forest Drive uh, near Richland Mall. So we are local developers. Um, we've been in uh, Lexington for quite some time. Uh, working on behalf of the fresh market, trying to find a home for the fresh market in Lexington. They've had a desire to be uh, in this community for quite some time. Um, it took us about a year and a half to locate a site that worked for them. They um, wanted a couple different things. They wanted to be on 378. They wanted signalized access. They wanted to be up on the front of the road with good prominent visibility to 378 and they wanted to be as close to the intersection of Highway 6 and 378 as possible. This was the first piece of property uh, that met all of the criteria that they were looking for. Um, we were able to give them signalized <coughs> access. We were, were able to site plan them up on the road. And uh, in addition to the fresh market, some others are following them, um, Ulta, many restaurants, boutiques, and shops. We're very excited about this project. Uh, we think it's going to be wonderful for the community, and we plan to do something that's going to be very, very nice architecturally. Um, we think it's going to be very synergistic with the community. We realize that um, any project that you do in any municipality, there are always questions, there are always concerns. The first thing we did um, in trying to determine how to do this and making sure we were doing this the right way is we met with planning. We've met with planning. We've met with planning, uh, we've met with planning tr uh, with traffic, with uh, the entire uh, staff making sure that what we were doing was being done exactly the way that they wanted from a traffic standpoint, from a site plan standpoint, from an interconnectivity standpoint. Um, they really uh, have been involved in this process all, all along the way. In addition, we've met with members of the community that are uh, in neighborhoods that are in relative close proximity to the project. We have met with members of the Saluda Springs community, um, the townhome community that's uh, down Saluda Springs Road. We've met with the members of the, H of, of the Hope Ferry community, the Hope Ferry HOA, um, and there are some concerns and to the best of our ability, we have tried to address all of those concerns. Traffic concerns, buffering concerns, um, everything that seems to be of concern to those neighbors, we've done everything we can to address those concerns. Um, our uh, civil engineer will speak to some of those things that we've done here shortly. Um, again, we're very excited about this opportunity. We appreciate you hearing this uh, today, and um, we uh, hopefully look forward to working with you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Jim Gamble. I'm with Polar Engineering out of Charlotte, North Carolina. We're the land planners, civil engineers, and landscape architects for the project. Uh, I'm at a little disadvantage <coughs> of our PowerPoint uh, to be able to see where we are from the podium. I think I can see that. Uh, but uh, we're very excited to be here and uh, be part of Columbia Development's team. I will mention we also have our traffic consultant, uh, Mike Ridgeway, here as well. And uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions you have uh, uh, following our, our brief presentation. Uh, the project itself, uh, as you know, is located on Sunset Road, and uh, your first slide you see here is uh, uh, just location of the site. You can see it's a long linear piece of property, and you can see the other commercial development uh, in the aerial photograph uh, along Sunset Road. Uh, in our next slide, uh, we'd like to indicate yep. it's there. Uh, as part of this process, of course, the annexation part of the process and the site planning process, and we're here today to look at the site plan approval, uh, which will therefore uh, move us into hopefully an annexation into the town of Lexington. As you can see from a commercial development standpoint and everything else along Sunset Road, uh, we call it sort of a donut hole uh, that's still in remaining in the county, but it's, it's a strong desire of the outlaw family and our client to be able to move this into the city of Lexington 
uh, for many purposes, which I'm sure you, you, can, you can understand. Uh, as uh, Jenkins said, uh, Mr. Williamson said, uh, a couple of things that we've done in terms of our process. Next slide, thank you. Uh, I, I won't be too redundant on that, but we've had multiple meetings over the last year and a half with, with John and his staff in the town of Lexington with Randy Edwards, uh, DOT, uh, to understand from the town's perspective what would be most beneficial uh, from a site development standpoint and a, and a site design standpoint, uh, traffic included and uh, transportation included. As, as Mr. Williams has said, we've had multiple community meetings with the surrounding neighbors um, and, and again, work very hard to understand uh, those concerns and be able to um, uh, work towards solution and do everything we can uh, to uh, take care of those concerns from the adjacent property owners because the success of this project is dependent on the surrounding community and the town of Lexington, obviously. Uh, we are offering, uh, again, transportation uh, uh, solutions along uh, Sunset Boulevard and Saluda Springs. And that, that we can talk about that more specifically later. I'm sure there may be some questions about that. But what we are doing um, on behalf of the town uh, and their suggestions is, is connecting back through, and we'll see that on the site plan, over to Saluda Springs and offering stop situation there and some additional signage and so forth to uh, do everything we can to protect the residents down in Saluda Springs uh, from, from any traffic uh, whatsoever. Uh, we're offering a opaque screening, uh, 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 maintaining existing vegetation all along the property lines uh, as it abuts residential land uses uh, to, to a, a, a very strong degree at a, at a very very cost uh, with uh, retaining walls and so forth. Uh, supplemental plantings, screening, fencing, everything we can, uh, again, in respect to the neighbors uh, to, to, protect their, uh, to protect their properties also. One thing that's very important on this property too, as we saw, uh, it's very lineal in nature, we'll look at that on the site plan, but uh, we say we're preserving over 25% of the property uh, in its natural state and undisturbed. And if it weren't for the detention pond, if you, if you took the detention pond back as undeveloped condition also, uh, it would be approximately a third of the site would be preserved uh, in a natural state and unbuilt. And then again, again to elaborate what Mr. Williams had said, the uh, high quality retailers that are attracted to this market and that will come to this property uh, are, a, are a very important high quality part of what we're trying to bring to the town of Lexington. So if we look at the site plan, uh, and I'll be glad to go into any detail we can, uh, as you can see, uh, the adjacencies and the existing vegetation at the rear of the property uh, the big pond in the back is our detention pond. It, it may be a little smaller than that. We're trying to be uh, just graphically um, understand the size of that pond in relation to the, what we're going to need to do in terms of our sedimentation risk control and our stormwater management. Uh, we want to do everything we can uh, to meet or exceed all those requirements. But what we're proposing is uh, off of sunset, uh, improved signalized condition on the traffic will have a drop lane and an acceleration lane on sunset. We've got uh, one thing from a tra transportation perspective is if you can look at our entry drive, we've got a very deep, what we call a deep throat uh, into the site, which will allow uh, ease of movement in and out of the site with very little uh, uh, congestion and, and very little uh, uh, opportunity for any, any problems there. Uh, the, fret, the first building to the southern part of the site, that's where the uh, grocery store is intended, the fresh market is intended with shops. We have some other shops, a larger box retailer in the back, and then other shops along the uh, uh, commercial uses uh, up along Sunset. And then as, as we mentioned earlier on that site plan, uh, we are connecting back over to Saluda Springs at the, uh, at the request of uh, DOT, of Randy and his team, uh, to connect in and give it another uh, another part of, uh, I guess we'll call it a relief valve uh, for some of the traffic to help some of the traffic uh, in and out and also allow some of the traffic from the neighborhoods uh, coming from the, uh, from the, uh, from the west, uh, ease of access into the shopping center for their convenience as well. The next slide uh, indicates uh, some section studies we wanted to elaborate on. If you can see up in the uh, section B, uh, up at the very top of the screen, you can see where that occurs on the site plan. And you can see in that section some of the elevation and the retaining wall uh, that we'll build in that way to uh, protect the existing vegetation along the buffer. We're uh, offering over 70 feet of buffer, but if you look at from uh, the building to the property line, there's well over 120 feet. In some cases, it's, a, it's an angled property line. So worst case, it's approximately 120 feet uh, adjacent to that property line, to, from the building to the property line. 
and it grows to uh, over 170 feet for us as you move on back into the property. But special care and effort will be made to protect that existing vegetation along the residential uh, adjacencies and also with additional screening, fencing, uh, and additional screening, uh, planting and screening. On the section A, uh, which is to the rear of the property along Saluda Springs, uh, the townhomes there, uh, you can see that uh, there will be very little, uh, if any, visibility into the site from, uh, uh, from the, from the townhomes. And again, we're protecting the existing vegetation, supplemental plant, planting, and then our detention pond in the back. And there will be fencing along the back side of that property too. If you're right down to Slough Springs, we went and looked at it again this morning, uh, there's a little perm on the back of that too. So we feel like uh, we're doing everything possible uh, to protect those, uh, those neighbors in uh, the community of Slough Springs. And as we move to the next slide, uh, the building elevations. And this is an example, I'd like to elaborate on this a little bit, the example of the high quality development uh, that Columbia uh, is known for. And it, uh, we enjoy working with them because they are uh, of quality uh, development. This is just architectural rendering of a schematic drawing with the fresh market. And this will give you a little bit of flavor of the architectural character of the building. Uh, some things may change a little bit, but this again is, uh, is sort of the, uh, the vernacular, so to speak, of how the architecture uh, would be treated throughout the center. Uh, and it'll be consistent throughout the center. It won't be uh, different architectural features on different buildings throughout the center. So we're trying to create a village type environment there as well. So with that, uh, be welcome to uh, any questions you might have. Uh, that I can answer, Mr. Williamson can answer, our traffic uh, traffic consultant Mike Ridgeway can answer. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm sure we do, I, I'm, and I, I'll start, I've got two questions. Yes, sir. It's about things that you've said. Um, you mentioned fencing along the residential. That includes both sides as well as the rear property you're gonna have fencing? The, the fence, what's intended for the fencing is, is along the northern part of the property as it abuts the development. Uh, it will not occur all the way around the property is our intent right now. Uh, but along uh, Saluda Springs, mm -hmm. uh, the townhomes, we would take the fencing uh, approximately a third of the way back on that property line. It's, it's sort of a function of the grade elevation as well, where, where the sight lines uh, just need some opaque screening there. And then on the, um, on the northern side, against the single family residential, uh, again, from the um, uh, from the building itself on the site plan, plan uh, would be our intention to take it about a third of the way back and then you just resolve back to uh, the natural vegetative state. Okay. We'll, we'll be happy to entertain any, yeah. any suggestions yeah. on that. Yes. 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 Um, the Hope Ferry, uh, members of the Hope Ferry community asked specifically about fencing on their side uh, of the project. Uh, they wanted it for two reasons. They wanted it for screening and they also wanted it for security purposes. And in the meeting that we had with the Hope Ferry uh, community in the, uh, I guess, upstairs in the room here, uh, we, uh, we, we, we said that we would do that and we're happy to do that. Okay. All right, the other issue, and, and maybe, I, maybe I misheard you, but you indicated there's a D cell lane on, on Sunset Boulevard a D cell lane, and you said X cell lane. That's right. So the, your, the, the sketch plan there, the site plan that we're seeing here does not show an acceleration lane. It shows a D cell lane. And I guess, I think your traffic engineer yeah, uh, might want to talk about that. That. Yeah. That, that was misspoken. We're not gonna have an acceleration lane okay. on 378. All right, well, you, but you're at a stoplight. <clears throat> you're at a stoplight, and we don't want someone getting into an acceleration lane and making traffic get over. Okay. Um, there will be a deceleration lane coming from Columbia or I-20 for movements into the site and then a striped dedicated left turn lane coming from Lexington. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, All right. Any other so. questions for the developer? <laughs> All right. Hearing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Time. I apologize for that um, misinformation. We, that's right. You're, you're, thank you. Um, and I see we do have a bunch of folks here this morning. Um, I'm going to ask to, to please uh, help me here. If you are here with a group of people, we would ask that you please nominate someone to speak from your group just so that we don't hear the same discussion 15 times. We understand, I think, a lot of what your concerns are. Um, we've received the emails, uh, but we also do want to hear from you this morning. So if you can, um, appoint someone to speak so that we don't continue to, to rehash the same issues. Uh, I would ask that you please limit your comments to five minutes if possible. Um, and with that, would you, when you come forward, please introduce yourself uh, and let us know where you live for the record, please.
Good morning, uh, Tony Barfield. I am with Property Management Solutions here in Lexington at 201 West Main Street. I am the managing uh, HOA uh, agent for the Whiteford Homeowners Association and the Saluda Springs Homeowners Association. Um, and uh, I'm here to speak on both of their behalves and to express their concerns with what they will, what we are already seeing in both of these communities so as far as traffic and congestion <coughs> and, um, and to try to, to, to help calm some ease. Although the both developments are, we're, we're, we're all for the development. We're great. We love the fact that we've got these new developments coming to Lexington. Our issue is with the side street, is with the side entrance that comes off onto Saluda Springs Drive. <coughs> um, I, being with the town and being in what I do for a business, I understand the town's need for connectivity. I hear it all the time on TV, listening to you guys talk about this. However, the connectivity that we're talking about behind the Fresh Market actually comes out onto a privately owned and privately maintained road that's owned by the Saluda Springs HOA. Okay, it is the cut through between Saluda Springs and Whiteford Way. Um, it is the desire that, that that road not be used for the purpose of this development. Um, <coughs> reasons for that is, we, we hear their understanding about the signage and how the signage is going to control traffic into the Saluda Springs subdivision. Currently, there is signage there. We do not have a development on site, and we're already seeing an increase in traffic into the neighborhood. They're not adhering to the signs. We are already seeing damage at the entranceways. If you drive into the neighborhood, you'll see where there's turn, they're, they're pulling up into the common areas and turning around because there's no other way out of the neighborhood. It, there's no outlet. Um, additional signage to me and to the, and to the communities is not going to make it look any better. Four-way stops, you know, no, it's just going to jam up that intersection. Um, the other concern is, um, you know, first of all, the HOA owns 61% of that, okay? They, they're only buying into 7%, so they, they're, they're really against this road being used for that purpose. Um, it is my understanding from the board president of Saluda Springs that that board is actually approved to put speed bumps and possibly gate that privately maintained road um, to, to help ease this, this situa situation with the traffic. Second uh, of, of three points with this, um, Whiteford Way. Everybody knows that Whiteford Way is a cut through from number six, Lake Murray, all the way up to 378. In May, we had a traffic study done. We had 29,000 cars over a nine day period with 57 traffic tickets written to those individuals who were in excess of 15 miles an hour on Whiteford Way. That's 15 miles an hour over the posted speed limit. Um, and running stop signs. Currently, Whiteford has four sets of four-way stop signs in the Whiteford community. And in any given day, if you follow traffic through Whiteford, they do not stop at those stop signs. Uh, at every town or every homeowner meeting that we've had in the last two years in the Whiteford community, we've had 120 to 140 of those homeowners show up who live predominantly along the Whiteford Way from number six to 378. Um, their biggest complaint is traffic, is traffic and speed. It's turned into basically a thoroughfare from Lake Murray, the Lake Murray area over to Lexington. Um, the, the, the third point that we have with this, this entrance in traffic is we understand there's gonna be a need for construction entrance. Um, the DOT, and the town or the county want that traffic entering and exiting 378 during construction. Reason being, current construction going on 378 right now with the nursing home next to Golden Hills, everybody's already seeing the damage that's creating on 378 and it's also seeing the traffic problems that it's creating with those trucks trying to get in and out during afternoon traffic. Anybody who rides up and down 378 right now or who will be riding up and down 378 come Friday when it rains will get a taste of what we're dealing with right now with that project because that project is it's, it's currently a mess up there with dirt and debris. So um, th this, these are the concerns with the HOA. Um, everybody I think behind me, if I'm correct, is right and possibly to the left or are with these two communities. Um, we understand that they've spoken with Hope Ferry and the impact on Hope Ferry is a whole lot less than it's going to be on Saluda Springs and to the Whiteford community as the traffic is going to increase tremendously in those two neighborhoods overall. So, Can I ask you a quick question? Yes, sir. How many total residents are in <coughs> Whiteford? We have 534 homes in Whiteford. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Tom? Yeah, I've got a question. Uh, 
you mentioned something about on the uh, privately owned road about uh, speed bumps or gating. Uh, I'd like the town engineer to clarify to me if that's possible. I can't guarantee that that's not possible, but it is a access that was part of the original development to gain access to the signal for the Saluda Springs um, subdivision. And it's, it is private, it was never turned over to the county. Um, but as far as I know from the county, it cannot be gated. Um, whether or not it can be speed bumped is another um, discussion. You know, because that's not because it is their road, but uh, but gated because it is a access. Okay, so fire service, police, etc., have to be able to use that. So gate, uh, just like it would on any private subdivision. You know what I mean? It's 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 not permissible unless you meet certain criteria, and it's my understanding that, that road doesn't meet that criteria. So, okay. So right. Go ahead. So it's a privately owned, maintained, privately and maintained owned road with public access correct that's the way i understand it from the county okay and, and we've talked a little bit this morning and and i think what we would encourage and, and at least i'm going to throw this out there is if if maintenance is a concern i think it's uh prudent at this point to approach the town and begin discussions about turning that road over to the town for maintenance and making it a public road I don't think maintenance is there a big I don't think maintenance that seemed is. to be the issue in 90% of the emails we got mm -hmm. and, I, and I do want to clarify one one comment that you made and one of the very yeah. first things you said was there there the access coming out to the east side of this property is accessing a private road that is incorrect that's something that has been we've we've heard for the last three days is that they're accessing a private road they are not they are accessing salute springs which my understanding is a public road am I, am I okay it yes it is across the street from a private road but we I, I, and i think what you heard this morning is this group and you watched us enough to know sure. connectivity is a huge issue for us had they proposed this project without some access to salute springs i think you would have heard us tell the developer we'd like to see that so they've brought it to us I, I don't think it's a bad thing to have the connectivity over there, but I'm not sure that the private road is something we have a purview or that we can get involved in a discussion with. We don't regulate it. It's not our road. They're accessing a public road. I'm not sure we can get into the, the, the fight over whether or not their traffic uses your road. I mean, that's just that's outside of, of where we're going. Have, yeah, were they accessing your road? Then yes, I think we would have that, that ability to have the discussion. But since they're accessing public roads on both sides, um, I'm not sure it's something this group can really get in-depthly inv involved in as far as that discussion. Um, so uh, there were a couple other things um, that you mentioned. And you talked about the debris or the, the damage that's being done over by the uh, burger place, the smash burger. Uh, I assume you're talking about track out from trucks, which is something that... Well, that we, we, we actually had a dump truck dump quite a load of dirt on the 378 a couple okay. days ago. So and and those, are, well, those are things that, that are required to be addressed through stormwater controls sure. and through site plans. And, and as you see those, I would encourage you to let the town know. Um, we have folks that uh, are here this morning that can go out and make sure that those, those items are addressed. And that should not be a significant issue for, for our folks as we go through development. Um, uh, other questions? Uh, for Mr. Barfield. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. Uh, we have other folks that would like to speak. My name is Teresa Coolidge, and I'm a resident of Hope Ferry Plantation. Um, I'm actually here speaking more on, not necessarily from Hope Ferry Plantation, but from all the citizens of Lexington. <clears throat> um, as you know, the greatest problem in Lexington is the traffic. Yes. Okay. Um, and from what, what I understand, a traffic study was done and approved by the traffic director. And who would that be? Um, I, I had a chance to go through it and look at some of the specifics. And I personally believe, and I think that a lot of citizens of Lexington would also agree with me that approval of that traffic study 
is actually a disservice to the citizens. Okay, let me bring up a couple things. First of all, the study said it will add 5,320 cars a day to that area. Okay, it did not address also that those 5,320 cars are gonna be at Hope Ferry Road and 378. They're also gonna be down at Old Cherokee Road and 378, Route 6 and 378. So we have a traffic problem right now that's only gonna get worse. Okay. <clears throat> In the traffic study, there was table three, and there are several intersections that go from one rating, they rate them A through F, they go from B to a D. Okay, I have a high school student, and if he came home with a D after getting a B, there would be a lot of work done in order to rectify that. Okay. My understanding is that they have some mitigating points, but Schedule C shows that three intersections are gonna go from run one rating to another, which is worse. It also doesn't address the problem of Corley Mill Road as an additional input to the town. I know it's a county road, right, in the county, However, whenever there's a problem on Corley Mill or Route 1, it all comes to 378. So add a few accidents, add a problem on Corley Mill Road, such as flooding or the bridge being repaired or another development going on Corley Mill Road, they're all going to come to 378. It affects the quality of the citizens of the town. I don't, I don't have a solution for it other than the fact that the traffic needs to be fixed first before anything is added to the town. Whether it be a community development, a retail development, or whatever. It's just, it just has to be fixed. I mean, if, you, if it takes me 50 minutes to get from my office, which is actually down halfway to I-20 on 378 in the evening, two miles away to get to the Hope Ferry Plantation intersection, it's a real crime. I think that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Randy, do you want to address any of those points? Uh, and I guess uh, the one I would like for you to address, and she pointed it out, is the, is the change in grade for intersections. Uh, Mike Ridgway is the developer's traffic engineer. And the, the one thing that I can, I mean, when we talk about traffic grading or signal or intersection grades, they're not quite the same as when you go to school and are taking calculus or English or whatever, that you get such a drastic drop. Um, the thing that's happening at the Palmetto Park Boulevard is that it's going from a three-legged intersection with, frankly, a low volume to a four-legged intersection. Now, it is the intent that that will actually work as a, uh, I mean, that the movements will happen at the same time, but obviously a little more time will need to go there. And then, so if you want to talk about that. Sure. Randy's correct. There's, there's not a whole lot of traffic that comes out of Palmetto Park right now. There's some, but that traffic doesn't have to yield to anyone right now because it's a T intersection. Um, one of the good things about this project is we're making use of an existing intersection so that Palmetto Park and the site access can work together when it stops 378, there'll be green that's shared by both movements. That's the reason for the change to the level of service D. Um, I think that's the best thing to do. What you want to avoid in a situation like this is what we call split phasing, where 
we have 378 stop, takes 30 seconds to service Palmetto Park, then it stops, takes 30 seconds to service a development. It's much more efficient for it to operate this way. I would also point out that the, the 5,200 cars that she's mentioned, a lot of the traffic for this project will be passed by traffic and will already be out on 378. Um, you'll, you'll have some diverted traffic as, as well, people that now shop at one grocery store that come to another. Um, certainly the project's gonna add traffic, um, but the main intent is to make use of the existing infrastructure that's there. We're not introducing any new intersection to 378 and also understand the, the concerns about the connectivity, but it only makes sense for residents of Whiteford and Saluda Springs to be able to get to this project without getting on 378. That's the whole point. Or for, for trips to occur between this project and additional retail. Um, that traffic should not be going past our access on Saluda Springs. If they are, then there's nowhere to go back there but to the development and perhaps there can be some additional signage that, that's put up to address that issue. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Miss Coolidge, I, I, I'm going to give you two minutes in a minute, but we're, we're, this is not a debate. It's a public meeting, so uh, please give us what you got to give us because we'll be here all day if we're going to go back and forth over, over each fine point, okay? So I'll be just let Randy finish and then we'll come right back to you for a couple minutes. I do want to just quickly comment more globally on the traffic situation because we all obviously know it's frankly the reason I have a job. But uh, <laughs> it's very true. Anyway, long term our, our plan is to actually address the traffic situation and you may not notice it immediately but we are in the process of uh, putting computerized adaptive programming on every single intersection along 378 as well as other locations throughout the town um, and i'm happy to report that while we've turned on five of the intersections currently we have actually seen an improvement um, in the actual free flow, um, both on Main Street as well as on the from Park to Butler on 378. Um, those five intersections have actually had the adaptive turned on. Um, I will publicly comment that this week, however, Main Street was turned back off um, just to do some uh, testing and whatnot. Um, so the times have actually gone back up, which I checked um, several times. And, and so we have seen a decrease, and so that system that we've put in place has actually improved the maneuverability throughout that small section of town right now. That's what's coming and will be in place in or about the same time that this development, as well as the other development, will actually come online. So those types of things aren't reflected in the scoring here, um, what the current movements are. So when you see a delay, that's based on today's operations. And so as our operations come on board, you will see it may be nominal during peak hour, but you know at Mineral Springs, at Whiteford Way, you will start to see some improvements because of what we can do with the um, computer model and, and how that system will actually work. So, all right, thank you, thank you, you. Miss Coolidge. Again, I, and I don't mean to be short. I just you know, we want to hear what you guys have to say and hear your your thoughts. But we'd be here all day if we we go back and forth with the developer. So. The, the 5,320 cars mm -hmm. um, is actually the net taking into consideration that 8,220 cars are actually coming in every day minus 35% bypass traffic, which is what um, the net then is the 5,340. So just to make sure that that number is um, understood. The other thing about, you said that not a lot of traffic comes through uh, Palmetto Park. I believe there's a, um, an apartment building down there and I don't know how many residents are down there. So. A, Okay. There's fire trucks down there. There's 
If, if you're going to speak, please come to the microphone so we can hear you and they can see you on TV. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Kim Kearns. I live at 336 Saluda Springs Road. Um, I have a couple of concerns. Number one, the um, thing that a lot of people aren't thinking about is all the, the ground around Saluda Springs is soggy. If their retention pond, I, 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 I don't know much about soil, but I do know that that ground is soggy. If you're gonna start building and if rainwater is gonna wash down, how is that gonna affect our neighborhood? You can, if, did any, who drove through our neighborhood this morning? Not this morning. Nobody? Did you see all the water running off? That runs off on the sides? Okay. I, I'm concerned about that. Um, and as far as I know, nobody has even addressed me as to what's going on. Well, I mean, they say they've done all these studies, but have y'all seen anything? Okay, number two, the traffic. I work right across the street at uh, Columbia Cardiovascular, and I'm not sure, are they planning, are you guys planning on the traffic to come in between the Lazy Boy and the Dominoes and to turn there? Or are you proposing that it goes over to Whiteford to the light and turns there? Well, I mean, I, I, we're, again, we're, we're not, we're not going to debate. If, I if you, we're not going to debate, if, but I live there. I want to know what's Ms. going on. Ms. Carnes, if, 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 may, please make your comments. We will ask the developer to address your concerns if you have okay. a question. Um, but again, if, if, if we have folks standing up and going back and forth, we're going to be here all day. I'm and sorry, I'm and I understand, I understand your forward. concern, and, and I think I'm that's just, a good I'm question to, to ask. I'm trying to understand what's going okay. on. Okay. Okay. So if, 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 if what would help us if you would speak into the microphone and address okay. them to us I'm they're sorry. here they're going to hear you and then we'll okay. make sure we write them down and have them address them okay i'm concerned about the traffic uh, i'm concerned about the uh, tractor trailer rigs that are going to be coming in there to deliver mm -hmm. all these products into this facility what roads are they going to use how is that going to affect traffic um the top spin plaza has a lot of traffic coming in and out of it there's one two three four four little spots coming in and out on that side, even before you get to the traffic light at uh, Palmetto Park Boulevard. Mm -hmm. um, are they planning on people turning left there, coming out of Saluda Springs? Are they gonna turn right? Um, are they proposing that people go down to the Whiteford? And if they do that, are they gonna go through that access road? And I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but I go there all the time, there's a lot of traffic. And it, it backs up to the daycare center. You know, those are just concerns I have. I just want trying to figure out what's going on, because okay. the traffic there is horrible. I I worked I, I'm there every day. I can look out my window and see traffic, um, and I don't know that. You know, I just would love to see the traffic studies. Okay. And and I I'd like to know about that, and I would love to know about how it's going to affect our water and how it's going to affect the the property, because as of right now, the ground's so saturated in the whole neighborhood. When we walk, it's like. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Uh, and I, I will tell you, it's the same way in my neighborhood, and the same way in every, every neighborhood in South Carolina. I think. I mean, we, with the amount of rain we've had, it is. Uh, well, there's water okay. running across every street I drove this morning to get here. There's water running across the streets. And that's uh, that's a great point. So what if it continues to no. rain and rain and rain? Well, what what is that going to do to our development? Well, if you're building up. That's large... the reason he has a stormwater pond. That is to capture the water that's coming off of his site. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna knock down all those beautiful trees. No, because he's not developing that property. He, the he's part that put he a retention pond back there? Yes, the part that he develops will be captured by a detention pond. And, and the deten detention or retention pond looks like it's at least half, if not one, one third to half the size of what your building site looks like. And, and that, is, that is designed according to uh, EPA standards for capturing and retaining the amount of water he's required to. Okay. There are, there are rules that are designed to make sure that that's adequately sized. Okay, if they're, okay. Well then, so if they're, Dwayne was telling me about some lawsuits, Dwayne, aren't you? All right. Uh, I, I just lawsuits on. on another, where the Lowe's is in that other um, neighborhood. And, where and that's, water. Um, I, I'm know, not, we're not gonna get into those things know, in this discussion. I know, but people have to understand, we have to live there. I understand that. I understand that. And, and, 
And I do want to speak to that because, you know, what we've heard, I think Ms. Coolidge mentioned it and, and uh, Tony mentioned it, was quality. Um, right. You know, we, we are here to, to try and understand what your concerns are, uh, address those concerns as mm -hmm. best we can. We're not going to solve the traffic issues in Lexington today. Um, the plan that they've given us, They're I think, make you it know, worse. The, the, the plan that they've given us has, um, I think, got aspects to it, which one of which is the access to Saluda Springs that are going to help alleviate, hopefully, some traffic concerns. I don't think you're going to find a lot of folks that are going to want to drive through Whiteford when there's a signalized intersection right up at the front of the thing. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't see that as so, being a... Uh, so what if let that me, does let me finish. a problem? Please, please let me finish. Um, you know, so I, I don't know that it is, but when we talk about quality, you know, we've got an email from the, from the Lexington County because we ask, okay, this property is in the county. If the developer comes to you and wants to develop this, what do you think? How, how would your standards apply? What we got back from the county would, there would be zero buffering, screening, uh, and setbacks for this because it's an intensive develop. That's the way it's, uh, it's defined in the county. So what we have here is an opportunity for us to control this growth. That's going to happen. I, I'm sorry. This is a, a piece of property that's in, in Lexington that is not going to sit there as three single-family residential houses for much longer. I, it's I'm gonna, not, it's I'm not debating be the structure. I'm debating whether they are appropriately going to okay. have all the and, and what, and what I'm trying for us not to be affected by okay. it. All right, okay. Are you done? I'm done. Okay. Thank I'm you very sorry. much. All right, uh, you know, and again, part of what we're trying to do here is to make sure that that happens. And, and through some of the discussions that we've had this morning, uh, you know, we, we know there are traffic concerns. We know there are other concerns. We think this is the best opportunity for us if the property is going to be developed to do it in the town with the appropriate restrictions, setbacks, and, and to protect that quality of life. All right, real quickly, Ms. Coolidge. Well, uh, just one last point. I know that um, you all represent the citizens of Lexington, they vote you in, or I don't know how you're appointed, no, but <laughs> we're, uh, we are appointed by you're council. appointed. I know that the town council mm -hmm. is elected in, but you serve the citizens. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you polled the citizens of Lexington as to whether they want to have additional traffic on 378 or a retail development. The answer is going to be no. Okay. Yes, I see one more. Yes, please come up. Two minutes. Yes, ma'am, come up. Good morning. My name morning. is Fern Rothman, and I live at 410 Saluda Springs. I'm sorry, what was your name again? 410 Fern Rothman, R O T H M A N. All right. I'm here to listen, I'm not here to debate, but I have to tell you how it is to live there. There's a reason why on Saluda Springs Road that there's a 20 mile an hour speed limit. I can tell you firsthand, I walk my grandson, my mom and I walk to the very end. We see cars, I live at the very end by the dead end. I see cars turn around because they think it is a cut through. It's a, not a good situation now. But I can tell you firsthand, when I lost my dad, that the police couldn't even come to my home. The police cars were to his home. Had to stay at the end because there was enough room for the fire truck to come. So this is the way the situation is. It is not a private road. Kids ride their bikes there. We see cars. I myself, kids don't realize it's a dead end. They ride all around. We enjoy it there. <coughs> if we have a cut through, it's gonna be much worse. And you're right, it does affect the quality of our life. So whatever happens around me, I get it. But living on Saluda Springs Road, it will change our life. And as of now, the road is so narrow that even the f three police cars parked, and I had to run and get them. So you have to think about that. OK, thank you. Thank you. All right. Have someone else? My name is Ed Elbrecht. I'm from 14 Carat. And I'm surprised that you've that included in the plan is a connectivity going the other direction. Um, you know, I would like to see connectivity all the way down to Hope Ferry Road. Really? Yeah. 
Okay. Because we've had this discussion several times with your project specifically, and we've been told that you yeah. you blocked that. So no, uh, that's a little just, surprising to hear that the, this morning. Just for the record, nobody ever called me. I had no idea that that was being planned. I, I never. So that the whole thing. Hobby Lobby on the other side, you never knew anything never, about nobody I, approached. I you? talked to the developer two weeks before your meeting. He never told me about it. Okay. All right, and I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that because that, you know, okay. that is something we've looked at for years to try and do is to get folks out to that, to that to uh, that stoplight where you're at. That everybody should have access to that light. That intersection needs to be improved. I'm willing to spend money on it. I'd like to see the development next to me spend money on it. Okay. Thank okay. you. Sure. All right. Anyone else? Yes, please. My name is Karen Campbell. I live on 393 Spruce Glen Road. Um, I'm actually the property that um, the development will back up to. And as far as I know, when I looked at it, it was 100 feet, not 120 feet. Um, I'm in the back of Hope Ferry Plantation and where the corner of, of Hobby Lobby would be. Um, I'd just like to say I think it's a little bit too much property. <laughs> a lot of development a lot of buildings for that piece of narrow track of land so I do have concerns about that I told them about that during the during the thing um, so I just had really had two questions one was there an environmental study done on on any of, of on any other property were there any concerns with that and number two I would just would ask um, if there would be a couple people maybe from the Planning Commission I don't know if y'all have actually walked the property um, but you're welcome to go back behind my house and walk back there because the creek goes back in my house so part of the creek is on right okay so part of the creek is on is on our land part of the creek is on our land and then our property line cuts back so anyway I just would like for y'all to be concerned because when they talk about the buffer I know it's 70 feet 70 feet of land and then 100 feet to the building so the way the property is sloped, um, I know there's a plan to plant trees. I don't think the trees are going to necessarily grow that way. So, I mean, I appreciate it, but I just think with the land, you know, the way that it's shaped, I, I don't know that all those trees and buffering are going to work. Um, so, anyway, I just wanted to, like I said, encourage y'all, if y'all haven't walked the property, to, to go back and look and actually see where the property lines are and where that building's supposed to be. It's just super close to our property line and, and I'm just not sure that the buffering plans are going to work. I appreciate that, but um, anything y'all can do to, to kind of help with that, because it's going to be really right in my backyard, the corner of that building and all the lights and the, the lane going around it. Well, and that, you know, there is a, you're, you're right, it's the, the, the zoning <coughs> requires a 70-foot buffer and a 100-foot setback. Right. Correct, am I correct there, John? Um, yeah, and and that's what they've they've drawn here. Now again, he may that's what it's required. He may give you additional space. There may be another 20 feet that he goes. I, I think if I'm not mistaken, the buffer and setback that's being offered on this side behind your property is identical to what is being done on the other side where Hope Ferry kind of behind Walgreens. That that your neighbors over there are are being offered as well. I think that I think this sure. is the same setback and, and buffering requirement there. So again, it it it, it meets. I mean, they're they're going to have to deal with you know making sure that vegetation grows and that they provide you adequate screening, uh, whether it's fencing, trees, a combination of that, uh, and we will make sure they do that. As far as an environmental study, I don't know that we do necessarily an official environmental study as if you know an impact study but they will have to delineate any wetlands um, and make sure that they protect those um, so from an environmental standpoint that will have to be done and I think there may be some of that on the back side as you get towards the creek so um, that may be one of the reasons they're not doing anything back there is to, in order to protect that um, but those will have to be addressed and identified as they move forward all right, yeah. okay, all right. Thank, you. thank you very much all right mr. Chairman make a motion we have one more person that would like to speak please come forward good morning my name is Dwayne Fisher I live at 340 Saluda Springs Road uh, one thank you for your, your time this morning got lots of more information so I, I you know feel better about some things but a few questions have come up and one thing you just mentioned is when I moved into my place, I was told that the, behind me is zoned to wetland. 
therefore it would not be developed. I'd always have my nice trees. And it sounds like that may be in question, either I had bad information uh -huh. when I moved in, or that has not yet been determined that we know what the area is back there. So that, that's one thing I have a question on. Okay. Um, secondly, on, on the civil engineering day, when, when the, the firm got up, Bulwark got up, I thought we'd actually get more civil engineering stuff as opposed to what the building looks like. My, I'm a degree engineer. I'm not a civil engineer. I don't know hydronaut, you know, water and all that. But I do know that we're at the bottom of a hill. There's a, there's a water issue, and I really need to get flood insurance. To get flood insurance, I need to get a civil engineering study done to get a, that done so I can apply for it. If they change the landscape and have a 170-foot drop, that's going to change that. Who's paying for that? Is the developer going to pay for everyone in our community to get flood insurance? Are they going to pay for flood insurance? I don't know. I mean, it, it seems to me the homeowners are taking all the risk of losing property value, having to pay for flood insurance, traffic issues, and the developers and Fresh Farm make money. I'm all for community growth, but it shouldn't hurt the citizens. And, and the last thing I'll say is also being an engineer and working things, I understand you can meet every rule and every code, but that doesn't make it right. I also know that EPA pond sizing is based on average rainfall. We have not had average rainfall. I have seen very few places around here where you take up all the trees, put in pavement, and don't have problems. It's just a general rule. And my last open question is, if the gentleman from Charlotte is looking for a home in Saluda Springs, he can come see me if he's that confident in his studies. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right. Do we have any other questions from the commission? Real quickly, yes, sir. Um, I'm gonna try to make it quick. I, I've been I moved, built a house there in 1995. I'm sorry. Would you please inter introduce yourself? I'm sorry. Where I'm you outlaw. That's <laughs> yes, Okay. And I live on this land okay. along with my brother-in-law and the Lieber family estate. And I've been there since 1995, built the house that was gonna be our home. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's commercial area now. And we see that we've got, got to move on. Um, we have worked for over three years to find a class act, so to speak, to put the Lieber family land into. They, they, the Lieber's been there since they were removed from Lake Murray. I don't think they put up this kind of fight when they were moved their house, but you know, they went along with it. Um, again, I've been out there since 1995. I've been a member of Mount Orb United Methodist Church. We're good people. We're, we're citizens of the area. We care. We're lifelong Lexington County residents. Um, the number one issue facing Lexington County residents is taxes. And the only way you're gonna do something about taxes is development. Um, it's not traffic. Traffic's a problem, I understand that. Um, but it's a matter of economics. This is not personal. We, these people encroach on our land. They tear down our signs. They tear down our fences. They put their garbage in it. We didn't complain. We got their cesspool type retention ponds 10 feet from our property line. We didn't complain. This is economics. Since the leavers had passed away, mm -hmm. our property taxes went up 1,000%. Now, I'm not complaining. I understand the economics. I understand the dynamics. Mr. Lever passed away. He lost his exemptions. We understand all that. We're not complaining. We, we can't afford to pay the taxes. My wife went up there and sat with the assessor. He said, this is commercial property. You, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. And he's right. We've got to move on. I'd love to stay there. I'd love to stay there. But we can't afford it anymore. We have worked for three years to get this class act development into the town where it would be buffers and it would be protection for our neighbors. If it doesn't sell with these guys, folks, we're going to sell it. It's going to be, and it'll stay in the county, and you'll have multifamily on it. That's I don't know, but I got to sell it. We can't pay the taxes anymore. And that's all we wanted to say. We, we tried our best to make this good for everybody. And it's just all we can do. And I could be here all day. I just, I just right. had well, to say myself. <laughs> Property thank you owners very much. do have some problems. I understand. Problems. I, understand. Yeah. I understand. Thank you. All right. Thank <laughs> you.
All right. Do we have any further questions from the commission or discussion? All right. Do we have a motion uh, regarding approval of site plan pending final annexation of the property? Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. All right. We have a motion and at least a second. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All right. And that is everybody as unanimous. Thank you very much. And I want to thank you very much for those of you that come out this morning and took your time to, to provide some input and discussion into the process. Uh, thank you very much. The next item we have is, uh, John, is related to proposed annexation of uh, these parcels of property. Yeah, we'll give one second. You're, you're good. Let's go. The uh, Lever Family Trust owns 19 uh, acres on three parcels shown <clears throat> under two tax map numbers, located at 5326 Sunset Boulevard, and has petitioned to annex the property. Uh, properties. A portion of the commercial center we've just been discussing uh, is being planned on these properties. Properties in town near this one are zoned general commercial and protected residential. And Sunset Boulevard is classified as an arterial road. Uh, due to the surrounding conditions and the intended use of the property, the recommended zoning is general commercial, and the recommended classification of Sunset Boulevard is arterial. All right. Any discussion? Motion to approve. Thank you. A motion by Frank. Second. Yep. John. John, thank Second. you very much. All right. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay. And as you know, thank you very much. Next item, John. <coughs> Cheryl and Thomas Outlaw own 3.1 acres located at the same address and have petitioned to annex the property. Um, again, properties in, in this area are zoned general commercial and protected residential, and the intended uh, use, uh, the recommendation for the uh, zoning would, based on the intended use, is general commercial and sunset being arterial. All right. Any discussion? We have a motion. So moved. Frank makes a motion. We have a second. Second. All right, Jean, thank you very much. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Last item, John. And finally, the uh, third annexation related to this development is a, four point, uh, a 0 .44 acre uh, parcel located at the same address owned by Bryce Wesley Lever. And again, the recommended uh, zoning for this parcel is general commercial with sunset being an arterial. All right. Any discussion? Do we have a motion? Motion. Right. Second. Please stand. Sammy, thank you very much. And further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. That concludes our business items for the day. Um, I do want to again thank the citizens for coming out this morning. I know. Uh, we don't always uh, grant and give folks everything that they ask for, but I think through this process, uh, the project will be improved and, and I think will be a benefit to the town um, and appreciate everyone taking their time to come out this morning. Uh, do we have anything else for the good of the commission? Frank, anything from traffic? For next week. Next week, okay. All right. Um, anything from council? Yes, sir. Thank you, um, Mr. Frost. Wanted to let everyone know that the mayor will be doing the state of the town on February the 1st at 630 at our council um, meeting. So I hope that you could join us. And also on Saturday, January 23rd, the Friends of the Lexington County Museum will be having their gala. It's celebrating the 200th anniversary of Oak Grove Schools. So that's going to be held here at the Municipal Center. 
So thank you for everything you do. Uh, I know today was difficult, and um, but I appreciate you looking out for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the commission? All right, we have a motion, motion. to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor, please raise your right hand. And we are adjourned. Uh, again, thank you for watching the Town Election Planning Commission in action. Uh, this was our normal monthly meeting being held at 8 a.m. Wednesday, January 20th, 2016. And a recording of this meeting will be aired several times throughout the week. I wish you a good day and a great week.